The coronation of King Charles III takes place on Saturday, the 6th of May, almost nine months after he ascended the throne following the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth. Coronations take time to plan. According to the palace, the ceremony will reflect the monarch's role today and will look towards the future while being rooted in long-standing traditions and pageantry. It's an event that's been mapped out in secret for two decades under the code name Operation Golden Orb. The palace is planning a memorable spectacle. The coronation is the moment a new monarch is formally crowned, but the service is about far more than the placement of the crown on the monarch's head. It's a religious ceremony steeped in symbolism. It's been broadcast on television only once before, when King Charles' mother was crowned in 1953. That coronation was a pivotal moment for the fledgling medium of television. A live audience of 20 million Britons crowded around newly purchased TV sets. And to make sure American and Canadian audiences could watch that ceremony on the same day, US networks booked space on RAF planes. Technicians processed the film in mid-air. The coronation of King Charles is a significant milestone for the British monarchy. It's the first to take place in the era of social media and digital communications, drawing the attention of many millions around the world. The coronation ceremony will be an Anglican service formalising the monarch's role as the head of the Church of England and defender of the faith. That's why it's held at the Church of England's most sacred place, Westminster Abbey. King Charles is the 40th monarch to be crowned at the Abbey. It's a tradition dating back almost a thousand years to William the Conqueror in 1066. Unlike royal weddings, this event is classified as a state occasion. It's paid for by the British government. Estimates from the planning committee put the price tag at 100 million pounds. Given the cost of living crisis in Britain, there's been debate about the expense of the event and demands for a cut price coronation. It will be a smaller and less lavish service than those of the past. It'll also be much shorter, just one hour compared to Queen Elizabeth's three hour ceremony and Queen Victoria's five hours. While the ceremony may be pared back, the jewellery will not. Royal regalia will be on full display, a showcase of jewels and artefacts collected through centuries of British rule around the world. The centrepiece will be the crown. In preparation for the event, the 362-year-old St Edward's crown has been refreshed and resized to fit the king's head. It features 444 coloured gemstones, including rubies, garnets, sapphires and tourmalines, it's filled with a purple velvet centre and trimmed with fur. It weighs 2.23 kilograms, about the weight of a brick, and it's estimated to be worth almost six and a half million dollars. King Charles will have it placed on his head at the moment he's officially crowned king. This will be the first and probably last time the king will be seen wearing this particular crown. For the remainder of the ceremony, he will wear the imperial state crown. This is the crown the king will be seen wearing most often for royal events. The imperial crown is adorned with some of the most famous jewels in the royal collection, including the Black Prince's ruby, the Stuart Sapphire, and the Cullinan II diamond. Then there's the coronation ring, also known as the Wedding Ring of England. It's placed on the fourth finger of the monarch's right hand, the sovereign's ring has been used since 1831. It holds a sapphire and rubies in the form of a cross over the face, representing the cross of St George and the Scottish flag. Their Majesties will travel from Buckingham Palace in the King's Procession to Westminster Abbey in the Diamond Jubilee State Coach. The Australian-built carriage has been referred to as a living time capsule made of wood from notable ships, castles and cathedrals of historical importance to the British. 
The procession will travel from the Mall to Admiralty Arch, past the south side of Trafalgar Square, down Whitehall and along Parliament Street to the west entrance of Westminster Abbey. Those invited to the ceremony will travel to the Abbey by car, taking their seats long before the procession arrives. The King and Queen Consort enter Westminster Abbey through the Royal Entrance, where they're met by the Earl Marshal, Great Officers of State and Archbishops of Canterbury and York. The Royal Regalia, the Crown, Orb, Scepters, Ring and Sword are escorted into the Abbey by appointed peers and they're laid on the altar. The service itself will begin at 11 o'clock. It has six distinct parts that have barely changed in the past 1,000 years. First is the recognition in which people acclaim their new sovereign. King Charles is led in procession through the west door of the Abbey, through the nave and choir, and to the chair of estate near the altar. He's wearing the coronation robes, the crimson surcoat and the robe of state. He'll break with tradition by doing without the customary breeches and silk stockings, instead wearing his military uniform, denoting his rank of Admiral of the Fleets. Members of the royal family will watch from the royal gallery as the king is presented to those gathered in the abbey by the Archbishop of Canterbury. The congregation declares, God save the king, as trumpets sound. The oath then follows. The monarch pledges to serve the people. The sovereign swears to uphold the law and the Church of England. The next stage is the anointing, the most sacred moment in the ceremony. To symbolise the stripping of earthly vanity, the monarch is divested of all symbols of status, including the robe of state. He dons the colobium syndonis, an austere white garment without detail or lace, to symbolise standing bare before God. He then sits in the coronation chair, a wooden armchair commissioned in 1296 by King Edward. It's been used in the coronation of every British monarch since. Using the coronation spoon, the oldest surviving item in the crown jewels, the Archbishop anoints the King's hands, chest and head with holy oil. The King has requested his coronation oil be vegan, replacing the traditional civet and ambergris which are derived from animals. Instead, it'll be made of olive oil, grown, pressed and consecrated in Jerusalem. The oil is kept in a solid gold flask called an ampulla, shaped like an eagle. After this is the investiture. The King will be presented with the symbols of sovereignty. These include the super tunica, a flowing coat of gold silk, the stole royal, a long, narrow, scarf-like garment embroidered with gold and silver threads, and finally, the imperial mantle on top. The king is then passed the regalia, the royal orb representing religious and moral authority, the scepter with cross representing temporal power as head of state. It's topped with the first star of Africa, the largest colourless cut diamond in the world. He'll also be handed the scepter with dove, a rod of gold topped with a white enamelled dove, a symbol of justice and mercy, representing the sovereign's spiritual role. To complete the ensemble, the king is then given a pair of golden spurs and armils, a type of bracelet. Then the crowning. This is the moment the Archbishop places the St Edward's crown onto the head of the king. The abbey will echo with cries of God save the king. This is a signal for trumpets to sound from Westminster. Bells toll across the United Kingdom and a 62 gun salute is fired from the Tower of London. The 62 guns represent 21 guns fired to mark a royal occasion, 20 guns for the tower as a royal palace, and 21 guns for the City of London. Now the final steps, the enthronement and a march. The king will leave the coronation chair and ascend the stairs to the throne, carrying the sword of state. The Archbishop of Canterbury and the Prince of Wales will take turns kneeling before the monarch. They'll swear an oath of allegiance, touch the crown and kiss the king's right hand. 
After the king is crowned, the queen consort has her own coronation ceremony. This is a little simpler. She isn't required to swear an oath, but she is anointed, blessed and crowned by the Archbishop of Canterbury. After the coronation, the consort part of her title will be dropped and she'll just be called Queen Camilla. She'll be wearing the Queen Mary's crown. It's made of silver, gold and embellished with 2,200 diamonds. This crown once housed the controversial Koh-i-Noor diamond from India, seized by the British during the colonial occupation. For Camilla, the Queen Mary crown has been reset with three of the South African mined Cullinan diamonds, which have a British imperial backstory of their own. Nevertheless, these jewels are being included as a tribute to Queen Elizabeth, who wore them as brooches. Buckingham Palace says this is the first time in recent history that an existing crown will be used for the coronation of a consort in the interests of sustainability and efficiency. She's also given two scepters, the Rod of Ivory and the Scepter of Gold. And after she's crowned, she bows to the king, then takes her seat beside him. At the end of the ceremony, the king descends from his throne and proceeds in state out of the abbey wearing the imperial crown and the imperial robe known as the Robe of Estate. It's made of purple velvet, a colour that's been used to signify imperial power dating back to the Roman emperors. Their majesties will then return to Buckingham Palace in a larger ceremonial procession known as the Coronation Procession. They'll ride the Gold State Coach, a 260-year-old carriage made of wood and covered in gold leaf. It weighs four tons and needs eight horses to pull. This procession, longer and more elaborate than the one to the Abbey, will include a large military escort and other members of the royal family. Once this parade of pomp and ceremony reaches Buckingham Palace, it's become a 20th century custom for the royal family to sit for official portraits. King Charles will then make his debut appearance as king on the balcony of the palace to greet the crowds on the mall below, a grand celebration of the new Carolean age.